on an individual basis, um, I, I'm not sure if, if there's kind of enough rhyme and reason to do so. People are going to be individually motivated. Um, that, I think that's where the policy set has to be smarter. And, and so supply and demand doesn't seem to be broken yet. Solving the big city puzzle of policy, politics, and technology. Too much for just one man? Maybe not. TFIC takes you deeper into the stories that are shaping the future of state and local government. To boldly go where no man has gone before. So you're not Buzz Lightyear. I'm Siri. And I'm Google. And I am Alexa. Alexa seems so smart. I think we'd have a lot to talk about. Pew, pew. This is the Future in Context. With Paul Taylor, I'm Ashley Silver. We continue our special month-long series on the Class of 2024 Public Officials of the Year with an honoree who lives and works at the intersection of governing and government technology. In view on this episode, a national leader in the public sector IT community who brought some Silicon Valley swagger to the Emerald City. Rob Lloyd has been widely recognized for his work upgrading IT systems in one tech capital, San Jose. He's starting to do the same in Seattle. Lloyd's POY profile was written by government technology's Thad Reuter. He joined Paul to discuss Lloyd's vision that it extends well beyond IT. Thad Reuter, welcome back to The Big Show. Thanks for having me, Paul. We are celebrating the return of the Public Officials of the Year, a 30-year tradition at governing, uh, interrupted for a few years, but it's back, and back with a really interesting slate of public officials. Introduce us to your POI for this year. Uh, it is Rob Lloyd. <laughs> I apologize for that. Uh, he just uh, he just he just took the big tech job in the city of Seattle, coming from San uh, San Jose. He was he was officially confirmed uh, just a few brief weeks ago. The city of Seattle's uh, been extremely welcoming and warm. Uh, couldn't ask for a, for a, a nicer group of people and. Uh, a great set of challenges as well. Uh, Mayor Harrell's laid out a great strategy and approach and has been pretty fearless in, in how he wants to take things on. You mentioned he comes from San Jose coming up to Seattle. Both tech towns, but one is uh, in proximity with Silicon Valley. Did he bring any of that valley, any of that vibe up with him uh, to Seattle? I believe he did. I mean, uh, when I uh, when I interviewed him, he wasn't even confirmed yet, so it was still very early. But yes, uh, if you talk to people who knew him in San Jose, he was a guy who reached out to everybody, including the uh, including the private uh, so called big uh, big tech firms out there. He liked to get everyone in a room, so to speak, and you know, uh, uh, you know, tap uh, tap their brains, get their inputs into in, in, into perhaps how they are seeing uh, seeing seeing a problem as well. I've had the opportunity twice other in my career and just uh, it wasn't the right time. In San Jose, it was right because I really admired our city manager, Jennifer McGuire, and said, all right, I, I want it under her because she had a style where I thought I can be part of a solution uh, set. And then it does change your point of view. So like when you're a director, you manage a mission and a resource where you're going in a direction and it's very defined and you know exactly that mission. And then when you're a deputy city manager, you have a remit and a large umbrella and you're leading leaders and you're really supporting them and saying, how do we work across boundaries and you support them as they define their missions. Um, and it does uh, alter your thinking. Um, and then sometimes you're a little frustrated because you're like, I'm not the leader here. I am the person making sure the leaders are doing and having what they need to lead. One of the big, uh, one of the big uh, things he was praised for was just taking this wider kind of holistic view view of things, almost like a city manager was, and he was a deputy city manager too. So that makes sense. Well, that wider view that you mentioned is certainly evident in your interview with him. Uh, pretty candid in talking about a wide range of issues that CIOs and CTOs tend uh, not to talk about, deferring to others, but uh, housing policy, post-pandemic challenges, budget management. And then, of course, there's the role of technology in solving these big intractable problems. Um, and he's now in a big city that is fraught with lots of problems. What stood out to you in that conversation? Well, kind of what stood out to you. I mean, I thought it was, I mean, I don't want to hype this too much, but um, I talk to a lot of uh, tech, you know, I talk to a lot of uh, public sector tech uh, leaders every week. And 
you know, kind of brave to talk about these big, big problems. I mean, we're getting to this point where AI and data analysis, you know, and all that, uh, all those tools can work together to kind of take this, you know, uh, hands around approach to homelessness, public safety, cybersecurity, disaster preparedness, disaster response. All these things he's going to have to deal with in Seattle, of course. Uh, Seattle, like most big cities, um, have a kind of a, a moment in time where the community and the priorities are shifting in a major way all at once, right? Um, so homelessness, uh, blight, uh, views on justice, uh, downtown revitalization, the economics, um, talent, um, how people are living and moving in and out. Uh, they're all adjusting all at the same time post-pandemic, um, and finances are shifting all at the same time. Um, the role of the federal and state governments are shifting, um, and uh, how communities are conversing with them, with the, themselves are, are shifting at the same time, and the ability to engage um, and how we can lift some of those traditional barriers are, are changing too. He doesn't seem like a guy who's just happy you know, sitting in his own office, staying in his own lane. I mean, he he's, he's happy to work with others in a way that I don't think involves too many sharp elbows. He seems smoother than that. Work with others and go, hey, we, you know, uh, we, uh, you know, we are, we are handling the tech side of things, but, but, but in this day and age, tech touches every single issue that a city has to deal with. And, and, and that's a very refreshing, very kind of brave uh, attitude I, I, I um, uh, picked up from him. Let's spend a little bit more time there. At some point, we're going to stop talking about the pandemic. But Lloyd's got some specific ideas around how technology plays a role in post-pandemic Seattle. Tell me about those. I think his views kind of stem from the pan from the pandemic. I mean, again, I hate, hate to overuse this uh, overuse this word; it's a buzzword. But you know, helping to deal with the pandemic required a holistic view. You had to work with public health officials. You had to work with law enforcement. Sometimes you had to work with zoning. I mean, you had to work, you know, with public works often, and 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 you had to collect and analyze this data quickly from all these different sources too. And I think, uh, you know, I think that's going to inform how he might deal with such a problem as homelessness. When it comes to homelessness, after all, you got to use the data. Where are they living? Where are they eating? What are the health problems they might have? What are the other problems? What is keeping them outside on the streets without permanent housing? And to do that, you need to bring in public safety, you need to bring in public works, you might need to bring in social services, a whole host of different people from different departments, and you have to get their data plugged in too, you get, and, and as well as their professional um, uh, insights, which are honed over, over, over their many years of experience. And I think that's going to really help him on, uh, you know, on uh, when, he, when he deals with such a problem as, you know, people without permanent housing up there. Um, and so all of these multidisciplinary problem sets, it's no longer swim lanes, I joke, it's a water polo. And we share a goal and our systems, our information and our ability to collaborate are uh, dependent on tools and information where IT has to be able to provide and connect people in a very fast and enabled way. And so we're going to be integral and, and be able to have to be able to help take on that challenge and, and make sure we enable folks. In terms of the housing crisis and addressing it, plus the political decision-making around it, do Lloyd's comments come from a sheer sense of personality or is a matter of his leadership strategy within the city? I think that's a great question. I'm not going to deny it. Uh, Rob Lloyd has a very strong personality, and I say that as a compliment. He, he comes across to me as bold. He knows what he wants, and he's you know really invested in in this in this mission of public service. But I also think he's smart enough to know that he doesn't have all the answers, and he has experience in San Jose with working, I guess, on the more political side. You know, the political foundations of policy. Uh, one of his one of his colleagues in San Jose, I forget whom, but it's in my story. He said, he said, he said, one of the good things about Rob Lloyd is that he doesn't always have to act like he's the smartest person in the room, even when he sometimes is the smartest person in the room. And I think that kind of, I've seen it over and over. 
I think that type of relatively humble attitude really plays well because you want to invite people in. You want to have the benefit of their experience and their insights and, of course, their data. And I think uh, I think Rob Lloyd uh, knows how to do that. And just to give you the punchline, I failed. I, I didn't get make the um, the housing affordable in the Bay Area. <laughs> um, we, we, we got some incentives through, but man, what a challenge it is. Um, and, I, and I worry about um, families in the future. Um, you know, what we've set up uh, and generations have set up, um, it, the, that housing crisis is going to be a multi-generational one. But um, you know, the, the challenge set and Mayor Harrell actually had a, a good way of putting it once. He said, Sometimes you don't like it, but you got to step on the scale and there's a price of leadership, which is you, you got to just take on your challenges. One of the challenges that public officials face is getting more smart people in a room. And in your conversation with him, Rob pointed out a number of times the importance of both leadership, but also mentoring and retaining talent. What distinguishes his approach from other employers in the city? And Seattle, like San Jose, is a place where there's lots of competition for tech talent. Absolutely. Well, he. Um, uh, well, I think, I think his approach is at least, if it's not becoming more common, it's definitely becoming more talked about. Based on several recent conferences I've been to, based on several recent other interviews I've done. Uh, first of all, Rob Lloyd is not uh, is not exactly an old guy. He's only forty eight years old, so he's still pretty young. So I think he, you know, he 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 has a good sense of what may or may not drive younger employees. There's always going to be people out there who are just going for the money. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but there are people out there who want to do more, who might want to, who, who who might be attracted to a public sector type of life, you know, with the mission, you know, helping the public. And I think he knows it just more than just about having the best software, the best tools, the cutting edge, you know, the cutting edge AI. He knows it's about building a team. He knows it's about being coached. It, um, uh, he knows it's about having a leader who can understand what really drives you and then working on that to, uh, you know, to, uh, to make you a more valuable member of this public sector service team. And he keeps talking about that a lot. I mean, I think he, I think part of it goes back to an experience he had in his uh, youth. He was an unpaid intern at uh, at um, uh, I believe it was Cook County uh, General Hospital in Chicago, the hospital that was supposedly the basis for the show ER. And he was just turned off, I think, by you know all these doctors who got frustrated dealing with HMO paperwork. This uh, anecdote is in my story. And I think, you know, I mean, he still, he still obviously talks about that. And I think that taught him a lesson. Try to, try to clear the hurdles so people can do the jobs they want to do. On the clearing the hurdles front for others, what's next? And is he likely to continue to lead with his chin? I'm not sure if he, I, I'm not sure if he's leading with his chin. He seems a bit more cautious than that, but I also, I mean, just as a writer, I'm struck by his boldness. He, he came across as a very bold uh, person to me. Uh, it is still very early in Seattle, but as you said, Seattle is 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 a big city. It's a it's still a growing city. Faces a host of problems: homelessness, cybersecurity, public safety, climate change. Uh, if you really look for it, there's a lot of talk about well, when's the next big earthquake up there going to come? Because that's going to be a doozy. And 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 I can bet that Rob Lloyd will be involved in that in some way, some uh, some uh, some shape and form in the coming months and years. He'll be he'll be helpful planning on that. I just think he's going to take a, you know, a, again, here's this word again, Paul, a very holistic look that's going to draw in other people from outside the uh, IT tech base in Seattle. I think he's going to find a way to draw in younger talent who might have different views or uh, original ideas. And yeah, that's going to require some uh, boldness on, on on his part too. I mean, he's got a great job up there in Seattle. The whole country is going to be watching him, but he's going to take the lessons he learned from San Jose and you know apply it up there. An interesting, interesting guy. Thanks for your reporting on this. Your profile is part of the cover story package in the fall issue of Governing. 
And it is also available at governing.com. Fad, thank you very much. Thank you for your time, Paul. Thank you for having me. I hope you have a great day. Thank you, you too. That is my government technology colleague, Thad Reuter, and his profile of Seattle CTO, Rob Lloyd. Next time out, we'll wrap up our deep dive on the class of 2024 Public Officials of the Year with a profile on the West Virginia State Senator who helped kick off a school choice revolution. Our editorial team includes Theo Douglas, Zoe Manzanetti, and Kaylee Tedro. Paul produces the show. Our executive editor is Noel Nell. And that will do it for us this time around. For Ashley Silver, I'm Paul Taylor. Thanks for listening. Always forward.